recording? Yes, we are. Okay, so question number 11. So, all righty, what do we have here? Give us a couple functions. Remember, we're adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing functions and asking for the domain and range and so forth. So, 5, 5, number 11. They give us two functions, f of x and g of x. And the functions they give us are 7x to the 3 halves, 7x to the 3 halves, and negative 14x to the uh, 1 third. Okay, and they want fg of x, that means f times g of x, and then they also want f over g of x. They're asking you to times them and divide them. And then later on, they're going to ask us to plug in 64. Okay, I'm going to put x equals 64. I got to turn the heater off. Man, it was cold in here a few minutes ago. Man, you should have figured it out. Okay, so they ask us to multiply these, okay? So I'm going to multiply this function and this function. So this one's going to start out with negative 98, okay? And where did that negative 98 come from? Seven times negative seven, or 7 times negative 14. It's negative 98, okay? And then when we times... We add the exponents, so I got to add three halves plus one third. Okay. When we add fractions, let's go back to middle school here. You got to have a common denominator. Okay. Common denominator is six. Okay. Turn a two into a six. We times by three. Let's times the top by three, and we get nine. Let's make three into six. We times two. Times the top by two, and we get two. So nine six and two six is eleven six. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to divide them. Okay, so I'm going to take this over this. 7 fourteenths, you got to simplify that. 7 fourteenths is 1 half, okay? Or, it's actually negative 14, so it's negative 1 half. X, when we divide them, we subtract the exponent. So it's not going to be 9, 6 plus 2, 6. It's going to be 9, 6 minus, minus 2, 6. Okay, any questions on that one? Again, 98, we just times these. Negative half is... So negative 7 14 simplified. We added these with getting a common denominator, and then we subtracted these with a common denominator. Okay? Then we need to plug in 64. Okay? So negative 98, 64 to the 11 6th power. Okay? I don't know what 64 to the 11 6th power is, but I can rewrite it as negative 98 times the 6th root of 64 to the 11th power. Now, I do not know what 64 to the 11th power is. I know what it means. It means 64 times 64 times 64 times 64. I'm not going to say it 11 times. Okay? That's a humongous number. A humongous number. But I think the 6 root of 64, that's one that you guys should be able to figure out. What number can I times by itself six times? And be careful. Some students are like, well, like 10? 10 times 10? No. 10 times 10 times 10 times. That's a huge number. Okay? Any guesses on the 6th root of 64? Could it possibly be 3? Actually, no. When you keep multiplying 3 by itself over and over and over, you're going to get what kind of a number? Uh, An odd number. It's got to be 2 or 4 or 6 or whatever. I'll start with 2. That's the easiest. It's the smallest. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 is 32. Times 2 is 64. So this is 2 to the 11. So negative 98 times 2 to the 11. All right, see how well you guys can do this one. We just did 2 to the 6. This is 64. Anybody know what you get if you double 64? Anybody do that in their head or not? 128. 128. Can you double that one in your head? How did I know? 256. Okay, where are we at? 64, 128, 256, double 256. Double 250 and double 6. 512, double 512. 1,024, double 1,024, 2048. Now, what's negative 98 times 2048? I don't know. Grab a calculator, guys. Use your phones or whatever. What is negative 98 times 2048? Yes, ma'am. Yes, they gave it to you. Yes. Yep. They said, do this, then plug in 64. And I'm going to get negative something. I have no idea what. I'm going to punch that in. I can't do that in my head. 98 times 2048. Not one of you has a cell phone with a calculator on it. <laughs> really? 200, or negative 200,000. 
200,000 what? 704. 704 Can I ask you that? Yeah, I did. Okay, thank you. All right, now we're going to plug it in here. So a negative one half, and again, like Hope just asked, we're plugging in 64, so that's what they asked us to plug in. 7, 6, this one will be a little bit easier. Again, 64 to the 7, 6 power, I don't know what that is. Do not know what that is. So we're going to say negative half times the sixth root of 64 to 7. We just said the sixth root of 64 is 2 to the 7. So negative 1 half times 2 to the 7. We just did 2 to the 7th. 2 to the 6th was 64. 2 to the 7th was 128. And half of 128 is 64, but negative. Let's see if that's there. Yep, it's too low. Okay, and you can use calculators on this. They ask us for the domain for the when you're adding them, and they're asking for the domain when you're subtracting. This is where it gets tricky. I'm going to take this really, really slow here, okay? And again, I want to make sure you understand, there's a lot of writing here, but all we've done is this. We multiplied them and simplified it. We divided them and simplified it. Then we plugged in 64, okay, for each of them, because they told us to plug in 64. They're asking us for the domain. What am I allowed to plug in on these? We're taking even roots. Can we take the even root of any number? Yes, ma'am. Um, and what, what do we plug in for the domain? Well, I mean, they're asking us for Just that. And they, yeah, you don't have to show any work. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I would like, I mean, I'm not going to tell you you have to do it, but I, I'd write down the work. Otherwise, they're just going to say, well, where did that come from? Negative 200,000. You know, you don't have to show all that work. So that's, that's how you get it. Okay, so that's for the domain. Can we take the sixth root of any number. No, you can't take the sixth root of, an e of, an, of a negative number. You can't do that, okay? You have to plug in. What's the smallest number I could plug in and take the sixth root of it? Zero. You could plug in zero. The sixth root of zero is zero. Because zero times zero times zero times zero times zero times zero is zero, okay? So it has to be bigger than or equal to zero. Now, you got to be careful here, okay? You might be thinking, okay, we're taking the sixth root here, so give me the same thing. You, you can't plug in a negative. You're not allowed to plug in zero on this one because what we have here, if we're dividing it out, if I took this over this, if I plug in zero, I can take the second, the square root of zero, or not, but I, I can't plug in zero here because you'd have zero on the bottom, okay? So it can't be bigger than or equal to zero. It has to be bigger than, it can't be zero. You can have zero up here. You can take this, the cube root of the square root of zero, and you can take the cube root of the square root of zero here, but you can't have zero on the bottom, okay? That's, that's tricky, okay? These are not, he's, he's take a bit. You guys want to see one more? Or you guys just want time to work? It doesn't matter to me. One more. One more? Mm -hmm. One of the tougher ones, or one of the, well, I mean. Easier. Let's do a, let's look at a, I'll do number, I'll do number 12. Number 12. Probably two. Oh, yeah, is he, yeah, he's going to come in today. He had some questions. Papa, yeah. All right, let's look at number 12. Okay. 12 is very similar to what we just did. Okay. What's 12 say? All right, so we have, where is it? Uh, 4x to the 5 fourths, 4x to the 5 fourths. G of x is 2x to the half. Okay, they're asking us to multiply them and divide them and then plug in 16 later on. So I'm going to put x equals 16 over here. We're eventually going to plug in x equals 16. So f g of x Three times them. Five fourths and one half, is that correct? Yep. Okay. There's one half, right? Yep. All right, so how's my answer going to start out if I'm timesing them? Four times two. So, eight. There we go. Four times two, eight. And then when we times, we add our exponents. Our exponents have to be five fourths and one half. But when we add fractions, we've got to have a common denominator. Common denominator of four and two is four. There it 
value is 5 fourths, 1 half is the same as 2 fourths. So if we add 5 fourths and 2 fourths, we're going to get 7 fourths. Then we're going to divide them, f over g of x. How's my answer going to spell out if it's f divided by g? Mm -hmm. Where'd somebody say it? Mm -hmm. Where'd you get 2 from? 4 divided by 2. Divided by two. two. And instead of adding these, we're going to subtract them this time. So it's going to be 3 fourths. Okay. Then we need to plug in 16 for both of them. Okay. So 8 times 16 to the 7 fourths power. So I'm going to do these at the same time. This one's going to be 2 times 16 to the 7 fourths power. I don't know what 16 to the 7 fourths power is, and I don't know what's. Uh, 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 wait a minute. Don't do that. And I don't know what 16 to the 3 fourths power is. So let's rewrite them both. 8 times the fourth root of 16 to the 7th. 2 times the fourth root of 16 to the 3rd. What's the fourth root of 16? That's what you should know by now. The fourth root, it's not 4. What's the fourth root of 16? 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Okay? So we have 8 times 2 to the 7th. Here we have 2 times 2 to the 3rd. The 4th through the 16 is 2. Okay? And then 2 to the 7th, we did that a few minutes ago. 2 to the 7th power is 128. The answer is 8 times 128. 2 to the 3rd, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So this is 2 times 8, which is 16. 8 times 128 is 4, is it 1024, I think. Somebody want to check that? 800. 169 to 60. I'm pretty sure that's right. Here, I don't know. I'll check it. That is right. So all we did was we times them and then we divided them. And we plugged in 16 because they told us to plug in 16. What is the domain for each of these? Okay. Again, I want to make sure you understand. Before I give you a domain here, maybe this maybe I'll clear things up. If I gave you radical x. The square root of x. Can I plug in whatever you want for x? <coughs> is there anything I can take the square root of any number or not? No, you can't take the square root of negatives. Can I take the square root of zero? Sure. Zero. So in this case, I have to plug in numbers bigger than or equal to zero. But what if I gave you this? One over radical x. Instead of just radical x, I have one over radical x, okay? I can't plug in negatives. Am I allowed to plug in zero on this one? No. And the reason is, answer this. Can I take the square root of 0? Yeah. But I can't here because I, 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 I square root of 0 is 0, but I get 0 on the bottom. You can't do that. So in this case, you're, you have to plug in positive. You can't, you're not allowed to plug in 0. Here you can plug in 0. Here you can't plug in 0. Okay? Fourth root. You can't take the fourth root of a negative, so it's going to be bigger than equal to 0. But when we're dividing, you'll have x on bottom, so x has to be bigger than 0. Hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. I don't know. Okay? All right, a couple of these are really easy. A couple of them are kind of like this, okay? Work together, help each other out, okay? All right, the rest of the time's yours, you guys.